parents and guardians, this is Becky Garrett, the certified school nurse for the Everett Area School District. Over the next few moments, I hope to share some tools and information with you that you may find helpful during the COVID-19 pandemic as it relates to your child attending school. First and most importantly, parents and guardians play the key role to Everett's success in educating children. For children to be successful in school, children need to feel safe and well. Each morning, we are asking you check your child for symptoms of illness. If your child is showing signs and symptoms of illness, please keep them home. You know your child the best. If you feel your child is not feeling well enough to come to school, or their illness will decrease their ability to learn, or put others at risk to becoming sick, please keep them home. When should my child stay home from school? If your child is vomiting or has diarrhea, please keep them home. If they have a fever of 100 degrees or higher, please also keep them home. If your child is taking an antibiotic, please make sure they stay home for the first 24 hours of treatment. If your child has an undiagnosed new or untreated rash or skin condition, please check with your doctor before returning them to school. Also, if your child has symptoms of COVID-19, please keep them home. So what are symptoms of COVID-19? They can include fever, cough, shortness of breath, headache or chills, general malaise or achiness, sore throat, or a new loss of taste and smell. They can appear two to four days after exposure. This is a symptom screening tool from the Pennsylvania Department of Education and Department of Health that you may find helpful. If your child has one or more of the symptoms in group one, which are fever, cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, please keep them home. If your child has two or more of the symptoms in group two, which include sore throat, runny nose or congestion, chills, new lack of smell or taste, muscle pain, nausea or vomiting, headache or diarrhea, please keep them home. Also keep them home if they are taking fever reducing medication. I encourage you to refer to this tool if your child becomes sick to help you decide if your child is well enough to come to school. This slide reminds us when screening for symptoms, we may identify students that are ill, but it does not mean the student has COVID-19. This chart lists the symptoms of COVID-19 against common childhood illnesses like the common cold, the flu, and seasonal allergies. As you can see, some symptoms do overlap. This is when the parent and guardian's role is so very important. You have the best insight to your child's illness and you may help determine what symptoms are normal for your child when they have seasonal allergies or a cold. When will students be sent home from school? If your child is vomiting or has diarrhea at school, we will call and send them home. If they have a fever of 100 degrees or higher, they will also be sent home. If your child is on antibiotics, please keep them home for the first 24 hours of treatment. If a new or undiagnosed or untreated rash or skin condition is found at school, we will call and recommend follow-up with your doctor. Lastly, if children are symptomatic of COVID-19, we will also be sending them home. Please remember students will be sent home based on their individual symptoms. This is a flowchart that you may find helpful. Start at question one and answer yes or no. Has student or family member been exposed to COVID-19? If yes, stay home, inform the school, call your doctor, return to school once your doctor has cleared you to return. If answering no to question one, move to question two. Does student have any flu-like or respiratory symptoms like cough, shortness of breath, chills, body aches, fatigue, or headache? If yes, stay home, inform the school, call your doctor, and return once you have been cleared. 
If answering no to question two, move to question three. Does student have a fever? If yes, stay home, inform the school, rest and recover, call your doctor if your symptoms worsen. If answering no to question three, then ask, has student been fever free without medication for 24 hours? If no, they need to stay home. If yes, then they can come to school and if need be, they can come to the nurse to be checked. What if a student or family member has been exposed to COVID-19? We are encouraged to stay home or quarantine for 14 days after your last exposure or until you were cleared by your doctor. We are also encouraged to check temperatures twice a day and watch for symptoms of COVID-19. Also, if possible, stay away from people who are at higher risk for getting very sick from COVID-19. This slide defines quarantine and isolation during this pandemic. A person quarantines when they have had close contact with a person who has COVID-19. Measures taken include staying home for 14 days after your last contact, checking your temperature twice a day, and watching for symptoms of COVID-19. If possible, stay away from people who are at higher risk for getting very sick from COVID-19. The person isolates when he or she is sick and think or know they have COVID-19. Isolation measures include staying home at least 10 days since symptoms first, first appear and at least 24 hours with no fever, without fever reducing medication, and symptoms have improved. If you test positive for COVID-19 but do not have symptoms, stay home until after 10 days have passed since your positive test. When can your child return to school? If your child has been home with vomiting or diarrhea, please wait 24 hours after their last episode to return them to school. If they have been home with a fever, please make sure they are fever free for 24 hours without the use of fever reducing medication before sending them back to school. If your child has been taking antibiotics, please make sure they have taken them for 24 hours before returning them to school. If you are doctoring for a specific medical condition, allow that doctor to give you clearance for your child to return to school. Lastly, if diagnosed with COVID-19 or COVID-19 symptoms, please talk to your doctor and get clearance from them to return to school. You can also refer to the protocols set by the CDC, Pennsylvania Department of Ed, and Pennsylvania Department of Health for return to school. If your child has COVID-19 symptoms or test positive for COVID-19, please contact your child's physician for further guidance and for clearance to return to school. Or you can isolate at home until 10 days have passed since symptoms first appeared and at least 24 hours have passed since last fever without the use of fever reducing medications and symptoms have improved like cough or, and shortness of breath. The last part of this presentation shares strategies you can take at home. So how can you keep your child healthy during this pandemic? Encourage them to drink plenty of water every day and stay hydrated. Encourage them to get eight to 11 hours of sleep each night. Encourage them to do 60 minutes of exercise every day. Show them how to eat a well-balanced diet. Teach them how to stop the spread of germs and encourage them to avoid contact with people who are sick. The attached poster shows additional information that may benefit you. What healthy habits can I teach my child? Washing hands is so important. And during this pandemic, washing hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds each time is very important. Teach your child to do this, especially after blowing their nose, coughing or sneezing, going to the bathroom and before eating. If soap and water are not available, use hand sanitizer. Also teach your child to avoid touching eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. How can I prepare my child for changes at school? 
take the opportunity to explain why we are physically distancing. Share with them that COVID-19 can spread through respiratory droplets by persons close to us. Explain what physical distancing means. It means keeping a safe space between yourself and others who are not from your household. Explain why we wear a face covering. Face coverings help protect others in case we are sick but do not have symptoms. How can my child safely wear a face covering? Show them how to properly place their face covering so it is comfortable and properly covers their nose and mouth. Please make sure your child can breathe easily through their covering. If not, you will need to try other face coverings to find which one works. Encourage your child to wash their hands before putting on their face covering. It is also important to remember that cloth face coverings need to be washed after each use and dried completely. This poster shares more information about wearing cloth face coverings safely. Thank you for taking the time to watch this slide presentation. I hope you found the information helpful and I hope it will be a good resource to refer back to as the school year goes along. The website links also have additional information that you may choose to view. Please feel free to contact myself or Elizabeth Yoakum this school year with any questions or concerns that may arise. Thank you.